Hello, you beautiful people. Welcome back to the Long Term Podcast. I'm your host, Advin Villa. Today, we have a fourth year marketing major and a fabulous cat mom, Erica Flynn. We will discuss becoming friends with yourself around the COVID-19 pandemic, the uncertainty of taking more than four years to get a degree and what do you want to be when you grow up going no contact with a narcissistic parent the pros and cons of being an older sibling slash mentor overcoming intimidation in a male dominated society and finding self-worth everyone welcome we are live here with the Erica Flynn. So yeah, uh, so how's, how's your day? Pretty good so far. I Fridays are my one day mm-hmm. off of both work mm-hmm. and school, so it's kind of nice yeah. to just do nothing, to yeah. be honest. And, uh, <laughs> yeah, no, fabulous cat mom. Can you go deeper on that? Yes, so my, actually, we moved, so I grew up in Shore Park, uh, yeah. And so did like my dad. So we were like Trip Park homegrown. And then, but my mom was from Millwood. She wanted to move out to the south side. My grandparents are there. And so when we moved, I was, it was like 2021, early 2021. So it was like kind of getting out of COVID, but we were going back and forth between um, lockdowns. Mm -hmm. And so when we first moved to the south side, our duplex, we kept noticing there was a, like stray cat that was coming in and out of our like under our front steps and we were like oh okay maybe it's just like looking for shelter but it was summer so we were like it's not hiding from the weather kind Mm -hmm. of thing and it just kept being out there we kept noticing and then one day my little sister was like is do you guys hear like crying under the deck and the stray cat in this new neighborhood like we just moved there like maybe been there under a month and this stray cat gave birth to baby kittens under our deck of this new house that we moved into and we didn't have any pets my mom hated cats like my grandparents grew up with cats and they loved them my mom did not like cats she's like they're dirty they leave hair everywhere whatever and we were just obsessed with these kittens under our deck but my mom was like leave them alone they need their mom whatever and then like a couple days later the mom picked up like a few of the kittens like I think there was seven of them she picked up like four Mm -hmm. left and we were like watching them monitoring them she didn't come back for like 48 hours so we're like bringing them out like cat milk like my sister was obsessed with them (laughs) and then the mom never came back so we brought in three of these little kittens because they were just like orphaned under our deck and they were just screaming and like you can't ignore that yeah and they were like days maybe a week old and we had to bring them inside because the mom never came back and so chanel is one of them i've never had a cat before her i adore her i would like i would i would die for her i think she i've never like i'm excited i'm even more excited to have a baby now that i've had a Mm -hmm. cat because i'm like I can love her that much. Oh my god. I, my sister is the same way. I'm the same way a little bit, not as much as my sister, but when you care for another being more than yourself, and you had said that you wanted to, you die for your cat. And yeah, I can tell which you, is crazy. I can tell you, you mean that. I, I do. I can just tell. For real. Like, it's <laughs> a feeling I've never had before. And my mom's like, you're crazy, whatever. Yeah, but I'm like, no. Yeah. I. I love her. She's Mom, actually just my child. child. It's not just yeah. A dog. This is <laughs> this is a person or not a person, a being that never judges, never yeah. just never has really any bad side to them. Well, like cats and, versus dogs, like yeah. it's not like she obeys me. <laughs> like she's only around. She chooses to be around me. Yeah. Like we have mm-hmm. we have a different kind of connection. Right. It's like an unheard agreement, okay. you know? <laughs> okay, um, so becoming friends with yourself and being alone during COVID, how has the experience of spending more time alone during the COVID-19 pandemic influenced your relationship with yourself? So uh, really, 
I think before, just to give a little context, before COVID, I was, you probably like know just like Shore Park to Shore Park, but mm -hmm. uh, from like a broad perspective, I would say I was chasing to be in like a quote unquote like popular kind of group. I loved having just like lots of friends, didn't matter who they were, what we did. I just wanted to kind of tag along, be involved, and, you know, really just be involved, I think, is the biggest aspect. I wanted to be invited. I wanted to feel like I was included in something. So I was just like, anyone who will like me, I will be friends with you. I had lots of friends, but I wouldn't say I ever really, like, opened up to anyone in, like, a way. And then... Just like seeing other people have like a best friend kind of thing was kind of a something that I really wanted after high school. Like I was like, oh, there's a difference between like having friends and having like someone who really knows you and will like ride or die for you. And I did have, I was in a long term relationship from when I was in grade like nine, when I was like 14 to when I was 18 oh, wow. or so. That's a long time. And so that also kind of pulled me aside from being able to make that kind of best friend. I would say like that was, he was my best friend at that time. Mm -hmm. um, so when COVID hit, I was kind of forced to think about like myself and what I value. And it kind of gave me, I would say like a restart almost in my life. That's awesome. Um, that's when I decided that it was more than just like um what i want to say like what the people i don't want to say like what the people could give me out of being friends with them that sounds really bad what but like I've, what i've realized after high school too is when high school it's so valuable to have quantity yeah quantity is you're popular you get invited to parties you are liked by all the guys all the girls you play sports you know but after high school especially with the onset of the pandemic, you realize when times get tough, who's stuck? Who's there for the bad times? Exactly. But it was, it was like force. And I think I'm, I, I say it all the time. I'm honestly grateful for COVID. Yeah. Like not like all the bad aspects, for, but for what it forced me to stop mm -hmm. and look at in my life was like life changing for me. Like the person I was, pre-COVID my boyfriend always jokes about it now he's like oh like you were such a you know B in high school like I can't <laughs> like you yeah. I did not picture you to be like the person I know I, now I'm the same way before high school even a little bit after high school I was a complete asshole like I I used people as a means to an end I said what I thought people would want me to say exactly it's i did things that people would expect me to do to be cool whether that be going to parties whether that be drinking lots of alcohol getting shit faced and what i've realized was that's just such an empty way of going about life and there's still a lot of people that do that these days and 100%. we're all what we're all in our almost in our mid-20s <laughs> hundred percent hundred percent and well um, like and i think it really forced me to look at what i value in people and like you said like who stuck around honestly for me it was like no one other than like my mom yeah, and my sister there, and family. like people that i was like were stuck with me really yeah. and like i do have some like long-term friends that i honestly like consider family and they stuck around which i'm like started to realize that those are the most mm -hmm. important relationships and they weren't the people that I talked to yeah. every day. Mm -hmm. They were mm -hmm. just the people that like they... loved me and knew me. And who you are. Yeah, exactly. I, when my life got tough after high school, especially rock bottom, probably the worst time of my life. And I stopped drinking. I stopped smoking weed as much. Um, now I'm completely, I'm 280 weed, days weed free, 400 yeah. days alcohol free, and 590 days weed free. It's right on that board. That's awesome. Um, I'm hoping to quit well, vaping this year. <laughs> yeah, good. Um, 
what I realized after quitting all those things is I didn't actually have friends. I had smoking partners. I had drinking I had buddies. party partners. Yeah. I had people that would hype me up so that yeah. I would drive them around. Yeah. Like, it's... Mm -hmm. oh. Mm -hmm. And it, you really need to take a step back and, like, especially seeing my sister yeah. in high school now, I'm like, oh, <laughs> my too. God, my brother, watching yeah. it all over yeah. again. <laughs> yeah, they, they have to learn the hard way. Mm -hmm. And when you take out all the the cannabis, the alcohol, the vape, it's boring. And like, what are we going to do? Talk? What are we going to do? Go out for coffee? Have an actual friendship where there's no substances involved? Exactly. <laughs> but I realize now my relationships are revolved around actual genuine conversation, going to the yeah. gym, actual building something instead of just wilding out on a Friday at 2 a.m. Well, that's important. It's great to, to have those times. Do well, yeah, it with that's people fun. that can actually have be there for the bad times as well. Yeah, mm -hmm. like it's a difference between mm -hmm. doing that. Like I feel like high school was so, like during the week, the people you go for lunch with, the people you can go for lunch with, the mm -hmm. people you can yep. get invited to parties with on weekends, mm -hmm. and the people that A will either drive you around or need you to drive them around. That was so high school. And then once that ended, for me, it was a lot of like, okay, I'm choosing a next step. I'm applying to universities. A lot of people weren't. Not to say that that's a bad thing, but it was just like, oh... I'm realizing my that our values didn't line up that it was like For sure. I need to stop partying or whatever now that I'm going to school in September whereas it was like still going to beer caves, still going midway, still yeah. doing whatever. Midway. <laughs> yeah, shout out to midway. But um mm. yeah, no, so mm. I think that really made me take a step back and look at what what do people like do our values align? Can we have like a full conversation without you having to be well, wasted or <laughs> drunk or like need yeah. to text it to me? Like it was very much so. And like, am I going to be embarrassed? I think that was a big thing for me was, am I going to be embarrassed to bring you around people that I love that you might say something I'm going to have to coach yeah, you beforehand? Yeah. It's like, hey, don't say that. Just, exactly. Like, and what do you mean? <laughs> I needed to step away and be like, if you have to <laughs> say mm -hmm. that to people mm -hmm. beforehand maybe yeah. they need to find people more like them and you need to find people more like you and there's a lot <laughs> of self-introspection that needs to get made to establish that in your life because eh? your values might be just okay having fun going out and well that makes you happy for the majority of people i'd say it's not very really fulfilling and for exactly. people they can live like that for decades their entire life even but I think for the majority of people that I've talked to who that actually want something of more substance, of more long-term relationships, wanting to be a father, wanting to be a mother, wanting to get something out of life where it's not just fun, it's actually fulfilling. Yes. Yeah. What are some practical steps you've taken to cultivate self-compassion and self-care during periods of isolation? So during COVID, uh, one of the biggest things, I did make a couple notes of some sure, of the things yeah. I did, but... Um, <laughs> During COVID, I really tried to, well, I did take a step back and kind of try to just mm -hmm. think about me, mm -hmm. which sounds selfish, but it wasn't at the time because I feel like I hadn't really taken a step mm -hmm. back to look about me. I'd taken a step to look at everyone else around me and see how they were going to benefit me, how I could climb that ladder or whatever of social status and look better and yeah. I think get more likes once, yeah, yeah exactly mm -hmm. and so uh once COVID hit I was kind of forced to only hang out with myself I would say at the beginning I realized I didn't I kind of didn't like myself I didn't want to hang out with myself because I didn't like myself mm -hmm. and so I really started to kind of grill I started to grill myself like I was talking to myself like someone I was forced to hang out with and didn't like every day mm -hmm. who so and then I was able to internalize that and kind of make those changes. And it was very, like, over time, obviously. But it kind of forced myself to look at myself and be like, oh, my God, if you mm -hmm. can't hang out with you, how do you expect other people to want yeah. to, like, actually get to know you? And so that took a lot of, mm -hmm. like, 
looking in deeper inside myself and I realized a big part that I was missing was like being a kid again and like mm. kind of prolonging it. I think I cut off my childhood really early and um, I wasn't able to like find creative interests and I thought that was like a disorder that I had in the beginning. I was mm. like, I can't be creative. I can't yeah. like in English. I'm like, I can't write a short story. I can't even imagine <laughs> yeah. anything. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But then I started to kind of realize, no, you're just like, you never had mm -hmm. the time and gave yourself the space to be creative. So I kind of forced myself during COVID to look back and I bought a DS on oh, nice. Facebook marketplace. That's I awesome. started playing like Super Mario Bros and Mario Kart on my DS again, yeah. just kind of bring back those nostalgic <laughs> endorphins. Mm -hmm. I bought a coloring book and some markers and started just Good like coloring. That's awesome. Um, yeah, no, so definitely just kind of giving myself the space to feel creative, just like kind of enjoy life, have fun. Um, mm -hmm. I think that's something that I was kind of forced to do and then it gave me like the space to spend my other time doing deeper things because I wasn't so tired spending of like my time thinking of deep anxiety mm -hmm. thoughts all day morning to night mm -hmm. and a big change with that too was I started going on antidepressants mm -hmm. but um I would say I did do the work it wasn't just the antidepressants course, it takes time to mm -hmm. like really reposition your mindset yeah. and your plasticity you mentioned something that gave me goosebumps because um, I feel I felt completely the same. I, I looked inside, I looked at the mirror, I saw this guy, and while I, while I had been going to the gym a bunch and while I had surrounded myself with these cool, cool people, and on the social status, I was, I wasn't the highest, but I was high up there. I realized how I've been treating people and how I've treated my family, how I've given back to the world, and I wanted to run away. But the only way to resolve all these maladaptive behaviors that I've been going through my entire life was to look from within and change it. Because it's so, when you look inside and you truly, if you look in, you'll find something and it's ugly. And I still look at myself in the mirror sometimes and I go, why did I lash out? Why did I hurt people? My the, the love of my life, uh, like the people that I love so much, why? And it's just, oh, it's because Maybe I had a bad, I didn't get enough sleep. Maybe it's the the food that I ate. Maybe it's I didn't get enough exercise. Maybe it's the thing that happened when I was in grade three. Da 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 da, da. Like, it's just. But it's it takes awful. a big person to actually, yeah. like, step back and take the time to think about those things because mm -hmm. there's so many people that like, mm -hmm. that happens and like used to be me happens. Yeah. You maybe think about it later and you're like, mm -hmm. oh my god, I can't believe I did that, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> but to like mm -hmm. actually take something and be like, why did yeah. I do that? And how can I change to not do that in a exactly. future situation? And I think that's really yeah, it completely yeah, it changed me it as a person. A mm -hmm. Yeah. There's mm -hmm. a lot of things I had to go mm -hmm. realize and then kind of reroute yeah. for the next that's time awesome. that that may come up. Have you discovered any surprising strengths or passions about yourself through the solitude of the COVID-19 lockdowns? Yes, I am mm -hmm. still amazing at mm -hmm. any Mario game you can put me up to. Oh yeah? Uh, DS, still strong there, didn't lose those skills. That was something I definitely realized. <laughs> uh, but I definitely realized that I'm stronger than I think. That's cliche, yeah, but so mind-wise, I was kind of like, I don't know like how people just like go from being one of the mean girls basically to like being a genuine person. I'm not sure if that can happen. This is going to be me forever. This is just who I am. Like I'm just like an aggressive kind of hard person. But when mm -hmm. you're able to take a step back and kind of mm -hmm. be like, no, these are, there are reasons that mm -hmm. you react this way to things. Mm -hmm. And that's not a permanent thing. Don't diagnose yourself with having mm -hmm. just these traits permanently. Realize why you're acting this way and how can what steps can you take to not yeah. act that way in the future. Yeah. Um, that made me realize, and once I started doing it, it was kind of an easy pattern to kind of pick out like, 
any bad, like, angry feeling I had. Like, why am I feeling this way? What can I do to make sure I don't hurt anyone or myself, like, emotionally, physically, in that situation, and, like, continue that on in the future? And the more and more I just did that in situations, the less it started coming up, which was really satisfying, to be honest. So, I think that was a big thing. Also, just, like, my mom and my sister are my biggest strengths, and I think that was something COVID pushed me to realize. I complained a lot that, oh my god, all the estrogen in this house during <laughs> COVID, but it was really, I think we kind of needed that time to reconnect, because my sister was like 15 at the time, I was like 18, 19, and so we were kind of like, teenagers, you don't really, you're not that close with your parents, and so I think we were kind of forced to reconnect with our mom, with each other, and that was really like kind of helped me as well know that those people mm -hmm. are always there for me that's great that it didn't end up dividing you guys hey it <laughs> actually brought you closer mm -hmm. so was was that the case for the entirety of it or was it i'm, I'm I sure mean, it we had kerfuffles for yeah. sure <laughs> being like yeah. i'm just you spend so much time around someone like even i thought it happened with my boyfriend whom i love forever but like mm -hmm. Just, you spend so much time around someone, you're like, oh my god, I, I can't yeah. be around you anymore, I need a break. Um, but it was kind of nice, we all kind of like our alone time, so it wasn't like anyone took so, offense to someone wanting to go hang out in their room by themselves, it was nice. So how do you deal with that? You just, with arguments and debacles that pop up? Honestly, we mm -hmm. are... Mm -hmm pretty good with not holding a grudge against each other. I would say definitely good night's sleep kind of restarts everything yeah. for all of us. That's kind of a big thing my mom's done since we were little. It's, it's kind of rubbed off of my sister and I. It's just like, <laughs> you fight about it, you walk away from each other. It doesn't need to come up again unless it's like an absolutely like mm -hmm. very valid issue that like needs to be sat down and like mm -hmm. addressed, which we didn't really have during COVID, but mm -hmm. like little issues, fight about it, bicker, you don't come back to it. It's over mm -hmm. with. You restart. It's like, hey, how was your day? Yeah. Like, it's fine. At the end of the day, you have these little banters or you, you fight with people, but as long as it's not actually within, if it's, if it's not something that you actually carry in your heart, that you're, it's actually weighing you down, there's no point in, in making a big deal out of it. But exactly. if it is, a time where you need to have those tough talks, you need to get some rest, then actually approach it in a way where there is a solution, there is a plan. Because if you go at a person angry, you're gonna say something that's gonna hurt them exactly. and it's gonna further the pain for both parties. Oh, 100%. Yeah. And I think mm -hmm. that's something we've had to learn, especially like when we were kind of teenagers mm -hmm. at the same time. And I think we've grown a lot since then. She'll be 18 and I'm what 23 now so but when we were in the thick of it like she was 13 14 15 i was whatever 16 17 18 that was oh lots yeah. of yeah. lots of disagreements lots of bickering mm -hmm. but i think the biggest thing for us was just like not mm -hmm. holding a grudge this is the person that's going to mm -hmm. be there for you forever the ride or die yeah. like would do anything like mm -hmm. put their life out of order for you yeah. so yeah. yeah yeah that's awesome uh, how do you maintain a sense of connection and community while also nurturing your relationship with yourself during the times of social distancing distancing so yeah. uh staying connected to myself i think really just having that mindset of like how can i better myself when I'm having those doubts about myself, like you said, it was kind of like a rock bottom. I think that's the thing for a lot of people. We all kind of hit rock bottom after high school, being mm -hmm. like, who am I? What am I doing? Yeah, what is this? Like, real life? There's what? no structure. No one's telling you what to do anymore. Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter who yeah. you're friends mm -hmm. with anymore. Yeah. Like, it's who you are, what you value, mm -hmm. what you're planning to do, mm -hmm. like in a long-term kind of mindset. Um, so I think just really focusing on myself was the biggest part of maintaining a relationship with myself is finding out what do I like, what pisses me off, what can I do to kind of make those 
piss me off moments less, not react as much. Um, that was kind of my biggest thing, just learning myself during COVID. I kind of became, was forced to become my best friend, even though I didn't like myself in the beginning. I ended up in the end of it being closest with myself I've ever been. And I think me, myself and I kind of worked together to become a person that I like now. That's, that's amazing. I, the way you describe your relationship to yourself, a lot of people don't really think about because they just go about their day and oh, okay this is how i feel and this is how i navigate life oh this is this person oh, let's talk to them and they never take a moment and ask themselves do i love myself because sure you can love your parents you can love your your brother your boyfriend girlfriend husband wife but do you love yourself <laughs> And I never asked yeah. myself that yeah. until I was forced to hang out with myself every day. Yeah. And I was like, oh my God, you're like mm -hmm. pissing me off. Why do you keep thinking these things? Yeah. Like, mm -hmm. why are you like this? And then I was like, yeah. I'm the only person that can change this. And you, I'm mm -hmm. the only person that's going to be with me for the rest of my life. Mm -hmm. So I need to make that be someone I can tolerate at the very mm -hmm. least. What would you recommend uh, to a girl that was in your shoes listening right now that doesn't like themselves what would you i would honestly say like step back think of yourself as someone you would want to be friends with and mm -hmm. honestly mm -hmm. if you need to start with grilling them and being that mean girl mindset and being like yeah. i wouldn't hang out with you because you act like this you always think this way you're always whatever it is like negative you're always complaining about things or like that was clearly what I was thinking about myself. But like, just like the little things, if you need to nitpick, nitpick yourself, do it. But that doesn't like mean you need to hate yourself. Then flip that around and be like, what can I, what would you want someone to act differently? If that was someone you wanted to be friends with, what would you want them to do differently? Because yeah. you have the power to change that within yourself. You might not be able to change someone else you don't like, but if you were to be your own friend, what would you want to change about that? And you can actually do that. That's, you can actually make the effort to do that. That's great advice. Yeah. And thank you for sharing and being so vulnerable. Of course. I'm, just, I'm an open book. Yeah, that's awesome. Um, so how have you coped with the pressure to have a clear career path and the uncertainty of not knowing what you want to do in the long term? That is a heavy question. Uh, I have had many thoughts, like Alyssa said on her episode yeah, when Alyssa she came on, it was, yeah, yeah, it was, had to take, I hit a few paths before I landed on marketing. Uh, I think I was into psychology at first, and then I wanted to do psychiatric nursing, then I wanted to do dentistry. And uh, I was just really intrigued by like the people aspect. I think that's why I started with psychology. Uh, marketing, I guess you could say, I like the kind of manipulation aspect, I guess, of it. It's cool. Real is realistically cool. yeah, what yeah. it is. Um, but that's why I landed there. Uh, but really trying to figure it out was very difficult for me. Like I said, I didn't have, it wasn't like, I was thinking about it as a kid, like, oh, I want to do this when I grow up. Like, I wasn't creative. Like I was saying before, I didn't have an imagination, really. So I wasn't imagining myself as, you know, a firefighter or doctor or whatever it was. If anything, I think, like, I was, like, in choir and I was like, I'm going to be Hannah Montana when I grow up. That's mm -hmm. That was my dream job. But I didn't really, like, seriously think of a career until I was forced to in, like, grade 12. And everyone's like, this is what I'm going into in university. And yeah, like, that was, <laughs> you're the uh, kid, like, what? what's wrong? I was like, what do you mean? We're going to have to be adults now. I'm like, you have what's to this? choose something. Yeah. We have to do that yeah. now. Yeah. So yeah. it was kind of pressured. I ended up just taking open studies my first semester mm -hmm. and taking, like, an English course, psychology and sociology or something. And I still even then had to like feel my way through classes, talk to people and be like, what are, what are you taking? Yeah. And like, why? why? Yeah. And what are you hoping to get out of that? Like, yeah. what's your long-term career wise? Yeah. Yeah. 
Uh, but I think really inspiring for me was I watched lots of the Barstool podcasts. Mm-hmm. I don't know if you're familiar, but there, um, lots of the girl podcasts on there were really inspiring for me. Maybe not to be on camera, but behind the scenes wise, kind of thinking about the PR aspect mm-hmm. of people that are like on a podcast such as you. Mm-hmm. Um, and those kind of behind the scenes marketing aspects was really intriguing for me. Mm-hmm. Um, also like the fun design kind of Canva yeah. projects. Those are always fun too, but that was really the most intriguing for me career wise, but it took a while for me to figure that out. Mm-hmm. And it was a lot of anxiety over yeah. that. Yeah, no, me too. I think. How do people know what they want to do? Exactly. Like you you went through these steps. You went through psychology and you wanted to do n- nursing, right? And yeah. Then now you've landed on marketing and you've tried and tried and tried, but you never gave up. But imagine if you did. Yeah. Imagine if you did, you wouldn't be a fourth year marketing student right now. And you wouldn't, if you didn't ask these tough questions, if you don't look in the mirror and say, who is Erica Flynn? Who is the real Erica Flynn? It, it's a lot of hard work and it's a lot of negativity at first and at ma- first but you get to revel in the success once you put in the work and once you actually put in the, the reading time and the studying and the showing up and the asking the questions because nothing in life is handed to you nothing nothing you know? and mm-hmm. i think that's mm-hmm. It's hard to accept at first, and I won't lie, I am a lazy person. Mm. I was even lazier, I would say. I'm the least lazy <laughs> I have ever been right now, but I've been even lazier. And it's it's hard to kind of feel like you're not on the same page as other people, mm. and like other people are progressing faster than you, and they know exactly what they want to do, what they're going to do full semesters each year, graduate in their four years, have a job, the next whatever couple married, months. Have kids. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. exactly. Mm-hmm. Like just like do it mm-hmm. step by step by yeah. step. And it's intimidating to feel like you're mm-hmm. not on that same path. And I think we're out of the spot mm-hmm. right now, like 22, 23, where there's lots of it's kind of all over the place. Like there are people that haven't changed since grade 12 <laughs> that are still doing like partying every weekend, whatever, yeah. can't have friends unless they're drinking or smoking. There are people that are getting married and having kids. Yeah. There are people that are graduating, having their careers. And then there are people like me who are just, like still kind of feeling their way through everything. Yeah. Um, and there are people like me, I, I don't know what I'm doing. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> even know, better, even doing. better. Yeah, just add yeah. another category. Yeah. But yeah, yeah, yeah. no, it's definitely intimidating. Mm-hmm. But I think, like you said, it's, it's hard work, but it's worth it once you start to kind of see the fruits of your labor. Yeah. Uh, can you share any insight or lessons learned from the experience of taking longer than expected to graduate? From college or pursue a specific career path yeah I I really think I've had to kind of tell myself you're in the long term you're just getting more education it's just more education going into these different problems and or programs and switching no problem because it's just more education for you even though I'm going into more debt, student loans, but that's okay. Don't think about that until later. <laughs> it's just money. Money doesn't matter. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Money's fluid. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, no, I definitely feel like I learned that it's not, it's not the destination. Like, it's the journey mm. you take mm. there in a cliche way. Because I feel like even if I was to commit to dentistry or whatever the first one was psychology psychiatric nursing or whatever it was I wouldn't be happy I would have graduated by now but I wouldn't be happy because I wouldn't have like felt my way through what actually is intriguing me why would I want to choose this I would have just chosen it to choose it and then kind of committed because I felt like I had to and then Mm -hmm. live my life probably in like that guilt of like well you chose this you committed to this stay committed to this or you're giving up kind of thing whereas i'm honestly kind of glad that i took a step back because i told myself forever you're not taking a gap year because you'll never go back because you're lazy so i never took a gap year 
but that doesn't necessarily mean that I chose what I wanted to do immediately. Um, I think patience with yourself, give yourself grace, don't compare yourself to other people. Um, you're getting the same education no matter what. Like, as if you finish, you finish. Whether that's in, like, two classes, takes you six years to get your degree, or you take the five, 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 and do it in four years. You're getting the same education. It's the same degree. Don't compare yourself just because someone can mm. rush it in faster. The, sh the stars that shine the brightest fade the quickest. Exactly. The people that unload everything, that just overdo it, can end up setting themselves up for failure because you're rushing everything. And sure, yeah, maybe four years is enough time for you because I don't know if people do it. Some people apparently do. Four years, it's... Uh, Ooh, yeah, five or six uh, classes a semester can yeah, be me. Yeah, uh, but life is a marathon and you have to enjoy the journey because as you mentioned, it is not about the destination because 99% of everything we do, whether it be about podcasting, whether it be about the, the degree, the job, raising a kid, reading, even the end, your consu 99% of that is your life. And if you place everything into thinking about the 1%, the entirety of the, your entire being, you just won't be present and you won't exactly. be able to enjoy. Because uh, I was listening to this guy and he talked about two people and one person gets to a level exponentially. They're just boom, boom, boom. They get rich, they get married, everything lines up. Sure, they get sad, but they just boom, boom, boom. They never take time to kind of enjoy it. But then there's another person, maybe they're not as successful, but they do try. They do try, but they take a moment every a little part of the day and they go, look what I've done. And you celebrate a little bit. You tell your parents, you tell your yeah. friends. And you rise up, there's all these people around you, and you get to actually fully immerse yourself in that aura of just fulfillment. And a lot of people don't do that. <laughs> yeah, no, even just like, yeah. like a self-love aspect of it. Like yeah. acknowledge you're doing shit. Yeah, you're doing something. Yeah. And you're living every day, that's something. And exactly. talking to your friends and family, that's something. Exactly. Because mm -hmm. some people are not so lucky. Yeah. What advice would you give to others who feel anxious or insecure about not having their future plans figured out yet? Yeah, honestly, like I was mm -hmm. saying, just don't compare yourself. I think mm -hmm. that was even just in a general aspect. I had to unfollow people. I found myself like still like Kendall Jenner, Kylie Jenner, no yeah. matter even if it's like whether it's about school, stop comparing yourself and like out of sight, out of mind. Don't think of like don't see it, you won't think about it, you won't be intrigued to think about it. So if there's people that you're comparing yourself to in a school aspect, I don't know if you're following all these super smart people with all these degrees that did it super fast mm -hmm. and were, you know, funded by their parents or whatever, and you're comparing yourself to that, you gotta stop. Like, keep it out of your reach. Don't compare yourself to other people. That's awesome that they can do that and, you know, had the ability to. But that's not your life, so don't force yourself to feel like that. You gotta enjoy the ride, really take in True. the people that you meet. I found it was a really big aspect mm -hmm. for me. It was just kind of like talking to the people in each of my classes because not everyone's planning on doing the same thing and plenty of people have no idea what they're doing. That was something that really validated me once I started kind of chatting everyone, with people. Everyone. Know what no one doing. knows what they're doing. No We're all kind of just faking it till we make it, which yeah. is like best way to do it. But we're all faking it. Like you really like sit down and talk to someone. You they look like yeah. they're all put together, whatever. No, turn like turns out they're dressed up for a presentation. They have no idea what they're reading about. But if you never yeah. talk to them, you'd be like, oh my god, they're so prestigious. They know exactly what they're doing. like. Exactly. Just don't compare yourself because like focus on you. Focus on what you can succeed at at your own pace because True. you're gonna get there doesn't matter how fast it yeah. is it is great to extract useful information from the people you look up to uh there's this guy named david goggins and he's a, a big ultra runner and i i do a lot of ultras as well and 
I compare myself to him and I, I go, wow, I could never attain what he's, what he's attained. But then why am I comparing myself to him? I should just be looking up and he's a hard worker and he's a fellow human being. And it is possible instead of going, Oh, look, look at that. He's done something. I haven't, you go, wow, that's amazing. Good for him. I'm, I know it's possible because he's done it. Because he's done it. And then with uh, models, those high models, it really depends what you want out of them. But I, I don't think I've really seen any clips of Kendall or Kylie being, yeah, fair. Yeah. Being, um, I don't know. They're not as humanized to me. I just see them as like, they're very attractive women and they, they, look are looking very young very luscious hair and then just they it's have almost the, like barbies like it's almost yeah, like, yeah. like a cartoon That's like a character hair. where you're like oh mm. they're perfect nice perfect yeah but we don't actually know them yeah exactly a lot of people wish that they could be someone hey i want to be x person i want to be brad pitt i want to be leonardo dicaprio i want to be margot robbie look at them they're so beautiful they're such great actors they're this person that i could never be in a million years Okay, but you don't know them. You don't yeah. know whether they want to off themselves in every day. You or whether it takes them to get yeah. to the spot where they're at. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. And they 100%. work hard for it. And when you view these ultra rich people, when you view these people that are ultra successful, you do not know them. You do not know the work that it took. And comparing yourself to them is just such a lost cause, a slippery slope. And you don't. You, have, you can derive knowledge, you can extract useful information, but there's really no point in chastising yourself into going, oh, but look at them, look, then look at me, because I used to have that problem all the time. But now it's just, I see that and okay, okay, they're at chapter 100, I'm only at chapter 3, that's okay. Exactly, like yeah. it doesn't mean it's not possible for you, it's just yeah. like, you're on a True. different journey than they are, True. you're on a different timeline, and that doesn't mean it's the wrong timeline or you're yeah. taking too long, it's just different everyone is literally just different yeah everybody's just fine differently and we all have a role yeah 100 um, percent. what advice would you give to others oh i regret that how has your perspective on success and fulfillment evolved as a result of navigating through the uncertainty of career choices and academic timelines i think mm -hmm. being unsure really mm -hmm. forced me to take my time which i'm not sure if i would have done if I didn't acknowledge that I was fully mm -hmm. unsure because right off the jump I was like no no I I, I know what I want to do I I like science so I'm um I'm either going to do psychology or I'm going to do like psych psychiatric nursing or something and then I didn't end up doing that and I was like I took an anatomy class and it was way too much for me I was like absolutely not. I'm That's smart but I'm not on that kind of level yeah. they're doing God's work <laughs> uh, I was like, yeah, no. Yeah. And then that really brought me down. But I think once you're forced to do it, like think about where, where do you see yourself in five years? You know, like the classic question, I'm, I'm always like, I don't know, things change all the time. But where would you like to see yourself? I think it's a better question. Like, where do you mm -hmm. realistically see yourself? That's so hard to ask. But like, where would you like to see yourself is like, I would like to see myself here right now, but in six months, mm -hmm. am I going to think the same thing? Probably not. I think the biggest thing for me was just getting inspired, whether that's TikTok, YouTube videos, talking to people at school, mm -hmm. just like explore all the options and like you're bound to find something that's like kind of interesting to you. As long as you never give up, there is something. Exactly. Don't everyone. give up. There's so many options, especially now. Like, yeah. you used to be able to be like, okay, mechanic, farmer, yeah. nurse, <laughs> which Soldier. one do you want to be? Pick yeah. one. And now yeah. there's so many options. Yeah. yeah. No, I had this uh, girl, Tiana Goslin, come on and she talked about like insurance. She's a appraisal, insurance appraiser, appraiser, and she loves it. And she didn't know that was a thing. There's so many career options for everyone. There's exactly. so many niches to fill so we can operate in the world. Fully. Exactly. Uh, 100%. So what were the initial stages you faced when considering going no contact with a narcissistic parent? And how did you overcome them? Oh, so this is something I'm still kind of 
um, not like establishing, but still kind of deal with, obviously, mm -hmm. on like an everyday kind of basis. Um, initial challenges, I would say, were definitely just guilt, mostly. Mm -hmm. uh, feeling like I was kind of taking away someone's child from them, I guess. Mm -hmm. And it took a lot of um, not, like, empathy, but kind of taking away right. a bit of empathy and being empathy, like, giving empathy to myself. Like, not just for my dad, but for me. Um, and I needed to kind of make a... Mm -hmm. It was hard to kind of differentiate the pros and cons because it was like, I'm not only losing this person, but I'm taking away kind of all the family members that support him mm -hmm. kind of thing. So it was mm -hmm. like, I also have to think about that kind of sacrifice. Uh, I think guilt, kind of like a shame of being like a black sheep, the one to kind of make that step, stop the trauma kind of thing, um, was at first really difficult, uh, especially just because of all the like ties to everyone's tied together in my family, one of my cousins on my mom's side had married one of my cousins on my dad's side, they're not related at all, but they're like, <laughs> oh, you phrase that but itself. somehow <laughs> Like, my mom's side is also connected to my dad's side, so yeah. there's, like, yeah. yeah, no, it's very confusing, but that was, at first, it was kind of hard. Once I realized, like you said, you find the people that stick, the people that are there during the hard times, and I realized just because one person treated me badly and I need to get rid of them, the people that can actually acknowledge, like, that it was wrong will stick around and the ones that won't acknowledge that things were wrong will not stick around but you don't need them because that doesn't bring any value to your life with the gravity of that situation what you i'm sure this wasn't just a one day you know, you thought about it and then you pursued it there was a lot of mental battle of you weigh out the pros and cons and then you you ensure what what is the relationship like because it wasn't all bad there's there's something some good and you this person raised you was there for you was there for your birth or, uh, all the mental battles how did you know that the cons outweighed the pros so this is also like during covid when like i think the last time i actually saw my dad face to face was in 2020 um both my sister and i kind of made that choice at that time it was nice to kind of have the covid excuse kind of thing we're like not supposed to be in contact with people um and that ended up being prolonged which was best for us we kind of took a while to acknowledge that we both ended up going to therapy during covid and kind of unpacking just everything and because we were very just overwhelmed by the feeling of like I need to help myself in this situation and like get away from all of the feelings that being around this person is impacting me and then also dealing with like but what happens if if I like establish that no contact what like, what is the backlash going to be yeah, from, like, not mm -hmm. only him, but, like, mm -hmm. his family, like, kind of thing. Um, and I think that was really difficult. But uh, definitely I knew the cons outweighed the pros when I was kind of forced to think of what, what have you learned from this person in your life, like, to make you the person you are today like a good person like the good aspects of who you are and like are they adding to your life in a good way or like there are people that add to your life in a good way a neutral way or a bad way they either take away from you don't add anything don't take anything away or add goodness to your life and my sister and I both kind of established that each interaction we had with him, whether that be verbally, face to face, or over text, or whether he was he ended up contacting us by email, 
kind of thing. It was just, it was taking so much from us. It wasn't just neutral anymore. It wasn't just like annoying. It was taking emotionally. It was right. taking mentally. It was taking time away from us thinking about school. Us thinking about people that are there for us in our lives. It was adding so much stress and guilt onto us. Just feeling like we're these bad kids all the time. Um, having to dedicate so much mental space to making someone feel okay at all moments and walking on eggshells. And I think that was kind of the ending point. Both my sister and I were hit rock bottom, I'd say, in 2020. And that was kind of like an all setting. We had to kind of sit down. We've had plenty of talks, but her and I kind of sat down. And we were like, we can't do this to ourselves anymore. Like, it doesn't matter how it makes him feel as bad as that sounds it's like we can't feel like this anymore and this is our best option enough our therapist had told us that too yeah exactly enough is enough well the people that we talk to it, we don't exactly remember what they say sure maybe we'll really fixate on a word or maybe a sentence that they said and you don't have to say anything a lot of the, the communication that we undergo in the facial expressions, eye contact, the tone of voice, and you've probably felt that this person, anytime he's around, it's taken away from you, and it doesn't feel genuine, and it doesn't feel rewarding, and it's just enough is enough, right? And how would you describe a person that's narcissistic? In my case, I would say there's, you know, different varying disorder, like of the disorder, I would say kind of in a medium tone, I would say the person I'm dealing with is, but just A, the worst part is they will never be able to acknowledge that the way they act, but it's nothing is ever their fault even yeah. if they can acknowledge that they did something it wasn't it wasn't because they had to do it it was because someone else did something that caused them to have to react that way like you did something to make them react that way mm -hmm. even if they reacted that way so what you mm -hmm. caused them to that was a really big thing also lack of Commitment, like lying, like a lack of trust, especially being two young girls. I think that really mm -hmm. messed my sister and I up mm -hmm. just like in a trust aspect. I wouldn't even say just with men, but in people in general, like even people just like plan, make plans with us. Like we never, it took a while for us to establish that. No, that's actually a plan. Like people would make plans with us. We'll make other plans just like, cause it's, they'll probably cancel. Like, that was just always my mindset. It's like, oh, they'll probably cancel or, like, they're probably just, like, talking about it, but it's not going to happen. Even if they're, like, next Thursday at 4. Like, it's always my mindset. Like, oh, it, pro it probably won't actually happen. Like, because it was just every time I was told something was going to happen, we made a plan. Never happened. But it was my fault if I expected it to happen, if that makes sense. I just had an... I just... That's insane. I... Just had an epiphany looking into my own self when you had described that it was so relatable <laughs> when the, i organize these podcasts and i expect every single person to cancel seriously like i i look and i'm like oh, okay they're why would they want to do this or did and i think that's rooted and because my dad was the same way he never acknowledged anything was wrong was kind of unstable a little bit and i didn't like my mom had left me when i was when I was nine, it was a very, very terrible just feeling. And then that those crush issues that I've like undergone, I still kind of hold that in me. And I've gone through a lot of just self-work and compassion to myself. But yeah, it's, it's, it's the worst and the best things we experience in life are from people. Exactly. Yeah, love, compassion. 
hate, resentment. Exactly. And it's, and it's just yeah. hard. Yeah. It's hard yeah. to deal with, especially when it's people that are so close to you. Mm -hmm. I think it's hard to kind of realize mm -hmm. that this isn't someone like mm -hmm. blood is thicker than water has always been like mm -hmm. a big thing. And I think mm -hmm. our generation is going to be the first to really establish that no, it's, it's yeah. not. <laughs> um, it's just, you deal with so many people and you have all these, as a kid, you just take it as, okay, this is how a parent should act. This is just, this is just how it is. And then when you navigate through life, when you go to a classroom and you meet all these personalities and you go, oh, how come this kid's popular? Oh, this kid's kind of mean to me. I wonder why that is. And then you in interact with adults. But when you become of age, you realize, okay, that was an unhealthy interaction. Okay, that was a bit traumatic. Okay, why did that happen? And you get to realize the toxicity of the, the gravity of the entire situation. Oh, yeah, sure. like mm -hmm. how people mm -hmm. are so influenced by mm -hmm. their parents was a big thing that I think post high school I was like, oh my god, <laughs> like yeah. there's a reason like the people that wore the Cookie Monster pants to school. There's a reason that those were them. You it's know what I mean? Monster. Like that, and yeah, it's like yeah. way deeper than you yeah. think in high school. You're just like, oh, they're weird. Yeah, no, this kid is going through some stuff yeah they're going through things they're not, their hygiene's not the best because they don't look like they they had got the best sleep i wonder why and everybody's exactly. so judgy but then when you realize when you're an adult when i was in elementary everybody was mean to this one kid and he had um, he had some disorders and he did presentations in the class and everybody was so mean to him but now looking back we should have been just more understanding <laughs> because, empathy yeah. i wish i would knew what empathy was as yeah. like a child because i was so judgmental Me too. and i didn't even think of like yeah the situations other people could be going through yeah yeah that's why when i talk to like a middle schooler high schooler i'm just automatically thinking okay i'm gonna imagine what i was like okay sure they're, they're definitely gonna call me names in their head maybe talk shit about their about me to their friends if I do do something weird. Yeah. But I'm like, oh, I was the same. So I can't. I, I, can't, I, yeah. I can't be hurt. I can't. Can't be a hypocrite. Hurt. Yeah. I yeah. Can't be a hypocrite. It's normal. It's really exactly. normal. Uh, what advice would you offer to individuals who are struggling to establish boundaries with toxic family members or contemplating going no contact? I would honestly say, um, give yourself just like be patient with yourself. It's not like you said. It's not something that happened in one day. It was, you know, kind of took some distancing. It took therapy. It took lots of conversations with my sister. You know, my mom is not really a part of it. She didn't want to be someone who influenced how we felt about our other parent, which I completely respect, but took lots of conversations. So I would say, like, talk to the people closest to you because they know you the best. And they'll be able to tell you whether or not this person is bringing value into your life or taking more of the person they love away. Sure. Which I think I was told by lots of friends. You know, I had lots of friends that came and met my dad, went for dinner with him. And they could just tell the change in both my sister and I. A, being around him, like we were so on edge, um, not like ourselves, not comfortable using different kind of language like we were like kind of talking like robots and then afterwards it was very like you guys are so quiet and like this isn't like you and it was just so emotionally mentally draining that we kind of just went on autopilot and i think it took people acknowledging that to kind of look into that myself and also tell my sister like hey we should kind of think about this on a serious level uh, so I'd say trust the people who know you the best, um, definitely speak to them, don't overwhelm yourself, you're not alone in this, if you have people you can talk to, do it, uh, definitely, there's a Reddit forum called, like, a uh, child, or I've growing up on, with a I've narcissist or something, yeah. um, definitely makes me feel validated, like, yeah. you're not crazy, uh, and just really just remind yourself, you're doing it 
for you. Like, it, mm-hmm. this is a form of self-care is removing things that take away from your spirit. True. Thank you for sharing that story. I'm sure it's not easy to have a parent like that who has done some damage and you've kind of just picking up the pieces and rebuilding. And I'm so happy to have uh, like heard this, this story and I know a lot of people are not alone. It's, it's, it's amazing to, that you are so vulnerable and you're so honest and the self introspection and the, the relationships that you've cultivated with your sister and the advice to other people. It's, it's beautiful. And Thank you. It, it took a while to get there, and I yeah. think it's other people's advice and stories that have really helped me get there. So I hope to, you know, mm-hmm. make other people feel less alone too. Is it okay if we take a little break? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So your sister is listening right now. Yes. Yes. Hello, Rachel. I don't mean to be creepy. But <laughs> no, I'm really excited. Your sister seems to love you very much. You're very lucky. Very loved. <laughs> Uh, so pros and cons of being an older sibling and the pressure to be a mentor. Uh, what do you consider to be the most rewarding aspect of being an older sibling? And how has it enriched your personal growth and relationships? So I would say most rewarding wise, especially like now that she's older, like she'll be 18 in November. She's mm-hmm. going to grad now. June 1st is her grad. So I'm watching her as like kind of basically become an adult now, which yeah. is like kind of weird. But um, most rewarding, I would say, is like we were saying earlier, just letting her make those mistakes and watching her grow from them without like sometimes I do intervene, but seeing her learn from her mistakes and actually take the initiative to change that and watching her better herself as a person without anyone having to, you know, reprimand her is definitely one of the biggest, most rewards the last couple of years. I've noticed everyone goes through a bad phase when they're like 13, 14, but these last couple of years kind of watching her learn from those years and especially like the stuff with my dad too, I think she was forced to kind of grow up a little bit faster than other people and just her showing empathy for other people and learning from the situation she's been put in is it's really rewarding to see that she is learning hopefully a little bit from me if not just like being a good person on her own you're proud you you went through these times where you were tested and you felt hopeless but your sister was there and you guys had each other at the end of the day you guys got through a, a situation where it is tough and you have to make tough choices that have a very, very strong consequences. And it's, it's great that she's more empathetic and just kind of, the support system is so important. Okay? 100%. What's, what's kind of your role as a sister? Honestly, mm-hmm. I would say I'm like, sort of like a parent. Which is like, it's hard to balance the like sister versus parent aspect, but I do, I love playing both roles. <laughs> yeah, no, you, you have to be the, the person to guide them because you've been there. I think it, you had mentioned earlier that your sister was in her partying phase and you know what that's like. But for a person to understand the other side, they must be on that other side so do they know if the grass is greener there yes exactly you can advise them you can take a horse to water you can't make the horse drink it (laughs) exactly and sometimes Mm -hmm. your horse can just let him stumble (laughs) do you ever like have instances where you become too forceful and that just pushes them away i 100 percent. yeah no I've, i've had those challenges to come up and what i've noticed is you just gotta you gotta lead by action sometimes. Right? Instead of just barking at them, just do this, do that. It's like, okay, you're gonna learn. Come to me for advice. It's gonna be okay. Exactly. Yeah. And I think ever since I've been doing that, my sister and I have been closer than ever because mm-hmm. instead of, like, it's almost like 
when you are like planning to like empty the dishwasher or something and then your mom's like did you unload the dishwasher yet yeah. and it's like i was planning on it but now i don't want to because you asked me it's kind of like don't don't ask them about it and they'll come to you if you ask about it then they're gonna be like oh, well she wanted to me to or she's trying to force me to get it out of me or whatever yeah. so i think that's something i really had to learn was like she'll come to you when she wants to and she does and then I give my advice and you know sometimes she doesn't and thankfully it hasn't been anything too detrimental that she has to stumble through and find her way but it's also good to watch her stumble her way and you know change for the better yeah. uh, how do you balance the desire to guide and support your younger siblings with allowing them to find their own paths and make their own mistakes and also be fun. <laughs> that is yeah. something I think I've kind of learned how to balance over the last couple of years. I was always a really like fun sister up until my sister started going through her like bad teenager <laughs> phase when she was in like grade nine. Yeah. And then I kind of, that was also when my parents split up. So I also, mm -hmm. I took like a, a guardian role. I felt like I had to like be the man in the house, kind of, mm. which is like weird for a girl, but I was like, you have a mom, she's gentle on you, I need to be the hard ass one. Okay. So I was like, curfew. I'm not taking you to a boy's house. Yeah. Like, do your homework. You can't get less than a 70. Get, like, uh, they ever have been saying, you're not my parent. What yeah. The, yeah. Yeah. I've, I've had that many oh, times. It's <laughs> yeah. like, yeah. I'm close enough. Yeah. Honestly, at yeah. this point, yeah. listen to me. So yeah. I'm trying to, I'm trying to make you better. You know, I will care. I love you, but it's just, Ugh. it's a tough love sometimes. And you can't yeah. force them. Yeah. yeah you exactly. can't force them. You can exactly. yell that at them as much as you want. Learn from me. I know better. And they're yeah. still like, mm. yeah. Mm, no, I, I'm going to my friend's house and we're going to, do something you don't agree with oh so. god yeah no exactly <laughs> yeah. so yeah. definitely took my mom to kind of take a step back and like let that happen i was definitely a more taking more of a parent role but yeah. as she's grown up it's been easier to kind yeah. of take the fun True. fun sister role you yeah. know like cool. I'm like yeah. oh she's in high school i'm like oh i can root for you and your friends yeah. or like yeah. i'll drive you guys to the mall like yeah. i'm i'm the cool sister which has been kind of yeah. nice they're on their phones in the back and I've, I've been in that situation with my brother too and they're they're just saying the most dumb immature Weird things and shit. you're just sometimes i just like i just flow with it and sometimes i just don't talk because it's just like when you're there and you say guess what brad's doing guess what Ter oh Teresa did my god what? like Guys, can we talk about, you know, like something of substance? I know. I'm like, so what have you guys been doing recently? Yeah. And they're like, on my phone. Uh, did you see her bit now? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's like, wow, I've, I've, I've been there. we all been there. It's I know, just, you can't yeah. even judge because yeah. I'm like, yeah. that was yeah. that was me five yeah. years ago. <laughs> what strategies have you found effective in navigating sibling dynamics and fostering positive relationships with your siblings while also maintaining your own individuality and boundaries? Yeah, I honestly, so I have a brother and a sister. Um, my brother is 30. He just got oh, wow. a position with the Calgary Police Service, <gasps> which is super exciting. He's been trying forever to get into the police service and um, really proud That's of him amazing. for That's that. Awesome. That's awesome. He just moved down there, I think, like last month or the month before. Uh, so mm -hmm. shout out to Jaren. Congrats yeah. on that. But uh, really, relationship wise, I think. It took becoming older to really get along with my siblings. I think I can say for my sister getting along with my older brother that too. They're 13 years apart. Me and my brother are eight. Mm -hmm. Rachel and I are five. So I think really growing up into ourselves has been a big thing, kind of getting along with each other. But learning from each other and not comparing to ourselves to each other, I think has also been a really big aspect of it. I think parents tend to compare you guys a lot and be like, why can't you be like this? Or why is she more like that? And 
you never were or whatever. Okay, it'd be like your older sister or your younger brother. He's so she's so nice. What that exactly. ends up happening is you just distance. You make them fight against each other because then there's jealousy involved. And why would you compare me to this? I don't you acknowledge that I do the dishes, mom, dad, like, and it's just exactly. yeah. If you, you're a parent watching, and I, I don't have any experience, but sorry, all the parents. Yeah, don't, don't do that. Don't compare your kids to each other. Hundred so percent. Set them up. Hundred uh, percent. Yeah, no, that's that's great. Uh, having a sibling is just such a beautiful experience. I feel bad for only childs. Like they're, 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 Same. It's miserable. Yeah. Oh, hundred percent. How are you supposed to go through life without? Who do you yeah. have as your like yeah. ride yeah. or yeah. die? Yeah. You don't yeah. have someone that like. Yeah. Mm-hmm. can never choose to yeah. like abandon you <laughs> like yeah. no you're stuck <laughs> mm-hmm. so let's talk about overcoming intimidation in a male dominated society and defining your worth can you tell me what yeah. yeah so really i think that was kind of another aspect that i really had to address during covid was kind of rerouting my mindset around like what has been something that is just kind of trained and learned versus like what are your actual opinions i think um i was really always told women aren't funny which was like a big thing that i just never thought like comedians women aren't comedians women aren't in funny movies like whatever and like then during covid i got obsessed with podcasts i was obsessed with whatever, just, like, watching stand-up comedy, and I'm like, oh, my God, like, if that's not true, then I kind of, like, fell into rewiring my brain and being like, oh, why do I judge other women when, like, they post their bodies, or if they're, like, complaining about a guy, or, like, even, like, I used to get so mad when, like, my fit friends would be like oh i feel like i'm so fat today i would be like oh shut up but it's like Mm -hmm. why are you mad at her she's having the same feelings you have sometimes like and i just kind of had to like realize that i was kind of trained to look down on women too and Mm -hmm. it's i've kind of had to rewire my brain where now i guess you could say there's a big attack on men but um it's hard to fall i've definitely caught myself falling into like i hate men's side which is also too far you can't Mm -hmm. hate either of them you gotta love everyone Mm -hmm. so i think really just kind of rewiring my brain to think of everyone as equal including myself like i think i look down on myself as a woman too which rewiring that kind of mindset has really opened Mm -hmm. my eyes not only to what I could be capable of, but respecting myself for what I have Mm. accomplished in my life. I fell into this rabbit hole of men just... Have you ever heard of a red pill? Oh, yes. Okay, well, it's basically men just trashing women and thinking, oh, they... Like, we could go without them and they're causing all our troubles. But for men that talk so much about... What, like about not caring about women you talk a lot about women a lot it's, of, you used to be just, really obsessed yeah, with yeah, someone it's you really, are saying and, to not yeah, like and same on the other side the feminists just take it to an extreme yeah you, you seem to really really care what they're doing instead of just focus on yourself and while I, I really don't like the double standards too where it's like okay if it's okay for this why can't this be okay and in, in certain cases I, I'm definitely no expert on this, but in just from anecdotally, I think if, if, if a person, if a woman and a man can't do a certain aspect of it, right, they, who, who decided that? Yeah, Society exactly. Decided that. Who yeah. made these rules? Yeah, yeah. And while there's a preference to, let's say, nursing, like you're a woman and you get into nursing, it's just more prevalent. Or if you're a construction worker, men just are, are there. Uh, a lot of people tend to like want to equalize everything too, and if that's the case, then we just force people into certain positions. It's no, no, no. Focus on the individual. Stop caring so much exactly. about men, women, because we just keep dividing. We keep dividing more and more. Just focus on yourself. Right? This just. I I'm a firm believer too, where if you're just like a a guy, a girl 
but don't have the, if you do, don't do that self introspection, if you don't clean your room, if you don't find a role in life, you have no business talking about these very exactly. immersed top, like, like the gravity of this topic is so like blown that it's just, and then the, the people that talk about them so much sometimes don't have their marriages together, don't have their life in order. And it's, if you're going to focus on that so much, maybe it's time to step back and focus on some self introspection. Exactly. Yeah. Well, like you were saying, I was yeah. just watching before I came around, I had yeah. your episode mm -hmm. with Ireland, mm -hmm. I think. Ireland, right? yeah. Ireland Ferguson. And like, you really, like, you mm -hmm. can't fill other people's cup before you fill your own. But yeah. you also, like, mm -hmm. You're not going to solve anyone else's problems or give anyone else advice until you're willing to take your own advice. Like yeah. we said, don't be a hypocrite. Like mm -hmm. if you don't give someone advice, you're not taking like yeah. I've had plenty of people be like, mm -hmm. tell someone to go break up with their boyfriend. Meanwhile, they're staying with someone who's cheating on them. And it's exactly. like, you're not in a place to give advice. And that applies to mm -hmm. all aspects of life. Don't offer someone else help. If, you're not helping yourself. Put on the life vest first before you start saving people. Exactly. Or else you're both gonna drown. You take your oxygen <laughs> yeah. first. Yeah, yeah. I I try to stay away from topics like that, and that because it is so like it's the topic where people can just hate you even though you're actually have, have good intentions because you say the wrong thing. It's like what you support that person or you Let's you say proportion. that and it's just. Nobody takes time to understand like fully a person because people on this side, like men or like women on this side, they just view it so linearly that it's just, there's so much more to a person rather than just their, their sex. It's not teams. Yeah, it's no, not it's men not teams. versus women. No. We're all yeah. individuals. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and you're, you, you said you're a firm believer in empathy. Yes. How did that come about, especially with, with men too involved? I think um, <laughs> that was kind of forced on me realizing that I needed other people to provide me empathy. And I realized I was being a hypocrite. I yeah. wasn't offering that to other people, but I was expecting people to offer that to me when I'm going through hard times like, why is this girl at the grocery store being so short with me? Doesn't she know I'm having a bad day? No. Yeah. She does not know you're yeah. having a bad day. No, you could but tell her. should she have been rude to you? No. I mean not. So I'm like... She could also be having a bad day. Exactly. Yeah. So then it's like, why yeah. is she doing that? And you can like mm -hmm. kind of got to look inward and be like, how can we avoid mm -hmm. both those, those situations, you feeling bad and her feeling bad? Well, take into consideration you're going through something so you might be easily agitated she may be going through something so she may be easily agitated or overreactive or whatever it is mm. and kind of apply that i just took that and applied that to all aspects of my life and especially like i don't know if you talked with morgan about working at the tanning salon but we mm. are like customer service all the time we have regulars that come in every day and i think it's made such a big difference just being kind and empathetic to everyone you come into contact with makes such a big difference on individuals lives like i haven't i can't even tell you the amount of people that are just like sit me down and are like thank you so much for being so kind and it's like i'm literally just like hi how's it going or whatever at the time so they're like you're so nice thank you so much and it really just stood out to me how mm -hmm. little people are Mm -hmm. like treat it with kindness i guess if that stands out so much to so many people is like mm -hmm. how do other how are other people in your life treating you if sure. that's a big interaction me asking you how you're doing today and that kind of just made me be like yeah. damn everyone deserves that no sure. matter what yeah thank you erica for thank me. you yeah no this has been a, a tremendous a tremendous value i'm so thankful this is fun. I'm, it was a really you. great conversation. Yeah, yeah. Um, do you have any last words to the audience? Shout out to yeah. the Long Term Podcast. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah. Love it. Watch all the episodes. Shout out to Advan. No one knows what they're doing in life. And yeah. we all have to fake it till we make it. Thank you. Yes. And <laughs> as always to everyone, there's a place for you in this chaotic world. Just keep going. Never lose faith. And yeah, keep it long term. Amen. Peace. <laughs> Love it.
Thank you so much. Thank you. Oh my